Hey there, welcome back. I've had several people ask me about this. So this is my seed binder. It has a zipper on it. Okay, it's called Case. Case it. So I like that I can carry it out into the greenhouse and then back to the house. So I like to have my hands clear so that I can, you know, bring my cup of coffee or a glass of tea. Let me show you what's in this thing. Okay. So you can usually find these baseball card holders in the impulse aisle, like at Walmart or Target or someplace like that. But it has individual slots. And then I have dividers in here. So this one is marked miscellaneous. And then this one is brassica. So I have all my brassicas in here. I have lettuce with curvate. Then I have corn. Uh, then I have herbs legumes, then tomatoes, peppers, and you can do this however you want, whatever makes sense to you, obviously. Melons, I have onions. I'm probably gonna change that to alliums because there's different kinds of alliums. Yeah. Root crops, okay. I have this is flowers. A lot of thing I like about it is it has all these little pockets. So I have, this is where I put the seed packets where I have planted all the seeds. So these are empty seed packets. This is everything I planted in 2020. This is where I have my seed catalogs and I have my wish list. So my wish list is where I start. I have a wish list of the things that I want and I'll do a little research, do a plant folio on it and I'll decide is that a priority for me. On this wish list I will prioritize. So I have whether it's an annual, perennial, biennial, uh, the USDA zone that it grows in, where will it go? So do I have a place to put it? I have the priority and I do priority by date. You know, like I'll write spring 2019 or fall 2019. So you don't have to buy everything at once. I have the cost. So I do this in Excel. You can use any spreadsheet software you want and you can do an auto sum where it'll, total, it'll automatically calculate you know how much it is and then I have the nursery whoever the seller is that's selling that where that where I saw that cost because seeds vary very much very v-a-r-y very much um, depending on who you buy them from and then I have my to-do list so my to-do list is based on what the seed packet is telling me so I have a calendar and that's a whole other video, I do believe. But I do this usually in the winter months, like when am I gonna plant what where? Especially if I'm planting seeds in the ground, it has to do with USDA zones and uh, your last frost date. And I will look at the back of one of these seed packets and I'll see, it'll tell me here when to plant it, like days to germination, days to harvest, and when to plant it. Like this one is kale. And it's telling me where I, for where I live, that I need to plant it sometime between February and March. And then again, I can plant it um, in July and August. So I use that information. And if you want me to do that video, I will. Let me know in the comments below, or if you have questions about any of this stuff. But that's how I kind of structure my calendar and my to-do list. And then I have, so this is for one month only. This was for the month of, what month was this? This is March. And then I have my daily. So I'm gonna plant certain things on certain days. I, I sat down and I wrote out what I wanted to do today. And then I had this by priority because a lot, a lot of times I can't do everything I wanna do in one day. So um, I will prioritize that. I also have a place here where I can put the temperatures. This so, is the forecast, the highs and the lows and the precipitation, and the status, a check mark means it was done, a little dot means it's in progress. Uh, if it was delegated, which I'm the one who does everything, but you know, there might be something that I need my husband to do that has to do with uh, irrigation or whatever. And an arrow going this way means it was moved to another date and an X means never mind. For whatever reason, I decided not to do it. So, and then this is what I'm going to do, and this is a notes page on what I actually did. But I can so go I can, back and I can look and I can see, hmm, when did I plant that? Because it hasn't germinated yet. You know, what's wrong? What's going on? And then I see, and then I can, you know, do the math and say, oh, okay, well, that seed's not supposed to germinate until, you know, for another seven days. 
that's the expected germination time, or it's been way past the germination time, something was wrong with those seeds. So whenever I'm planting my seeds indoors, that is really important to me. I want to know that information. When I potted it up, that's another time where I write down the date. So a lot of times I will go ahead and write it on the plant marker as well, but sometimes I forget. So I'll write down, you know, the date of when I planted those seeds before they even germinate, okay? And the seed packet needs to jive with what's going on. So I use that information that way. So I have my layouts. So in this case, let's see what I have here. Um, this is my Apple Guild. This is where I can do my planning, like I can draw out what I want to go where. And in this one, I can see, okay, this tree right here is a Honeycrisp apple. A lot of times it doesn't really, you know, somebody, very seldom will someone say, what kind of broccoli is that? But with an apple tree, totally different story. We planted these three years ago, and sometimes I have a hard time remembering, but this tells me this is a Honeycrisp apple, this is a Gala apple, and this is a Pink Lady apple. And so then I also have thyme, zinnias, four o'clocks, uh, larkspur, garlic, horseradish, lavender, and so on and so forth with a scale. And so the way that I did this, and I am gonna do a video on this because I'm really pumped about this. This is something that really just helps me out a ton. Um, stay tuned for that. But this gives me, you know, like my uh, food forest layers, the canopy layer, the shrub layer, the herbaceous layer, the ground cover, the vine layer bulb or the root layer. And so this is an elevation view. This is a plan view. I call it a bird's eye view, but it just really helps me make sure that I tick all the boxes. Did I also get nitrogen fixers in there? A weed barrier, fumigants or repels pests, dynamic accumulators, uh, attracts beneficial insects and so on. So this is where I do my um, planning. Now this is some old ones before I really had this down. I had to do this for myself <laughs> because just to keep things straight. This is kind of an older one that I did uh, from 2017. That's how I remembered where to put things. And this is, you know, from my different gardens. But you can see, this is a plan that I did that I haven't actually fulfilled yet, but you know, just keeping all of this information straight. Okay, this was all in a, like um, an artist pad and I just pulled these out because I was always looking for this information and I have to go back to several different places to find it. I have some extra baseball card holders in case these other ones get filled up. Um, I have a compost journal. Um, then I also have a harvest um, journal. Okay, this harvest journal is so cool. I love this. This is this is fun. This is like, you know, the fruition when everything comes to fruit, right? So one of the things that I do, a lot of this stuff, it's on my phone as well because I can share between Google Calendar. If I put it all in my computer in my office, um, when I'm doing all my planning, it's usually inside in the office. But then I can also have the app on my phone where I, I don't have to bring my computer out to the, the greenhouse or the garden or go print everything out. It's kind of a hybrid system. I can actually look on my phone at a, a PDF of my uh, plant folios. I can look at the calendar. I can change things in the calendar like, okay, I know I'm not supposed to do this until tomorrow, but I did it today. We're really geeking out big time here. <laughs> what I do with my harvest journal a lot of times I will post a picture on Instagram and it'll be on a scale, either one of the flat digital scales, if it's something like herbs and it doesn't weigh a lot, or if it's something that's heavier, I have a, I have a bigger scale for something like tomatoes or cucumelons or cucumbers or whatever, and I'll weigh them, but I'll write down the date, how much it weighed and what it was, but I don't always do that in here. Uh, but I can go back to Instagram and I can see, okay, that was okra. Um, it weighed this much because I take a picture of the weight as well as what it is and Instagram gives me the date that it was posted. So I kind of use Instagram as kind of a backup garden journal. So I think it's really cool to know how many pounds of food did I grow? And then I can, I can take a, you know, go to the grocery store, maybe snap some pictures or make some notes of how much organic, because I do everything in a way beyond organic way. I can see, okay, organic okra costs this much, and I can multiply that times however much 
okra I harvested. I usually grow a lot more okra than I harvest, but <laughs> that's a whole other story because I let them get too big. Same way with cucumbers sometimes. Um, but you know, we have chickens and so I will put eggs on here. Like how much money are we saving by me doing this? You know, which is not my big why, but it's kind of a cool byproduct of that. This is kind of bulky to actually carry out and do some mapping and planning or writing or whatever. So I can take this with me if I want to and then I can always tear these pages out and then put them loose leaf in there so I can move the pages around. This thing was really born out of trial and error over the course of about two decades. So I have looked at other garden journals. I kind of consider this my seed bank and garden journal. But I've looked at so many garden journals. I don't like the ones that are spiral bound or that are hard bound, even though they're prettier than mine, way prettier than this. Uh, it doesn't work for me because I wanna move pages around. I need to take pages out. I need to put pages in, like they may only give you 20 pages of one thing. Um, not to besmirch anybody else's work, but I, I just, I wanna have more freedom than that. I wanna be able to move things around, take things out. There's some things that I put in here that I don't even use and I was like, well, I thought that was a good idea, but evidently it's not because I don't use it. So I really like the system. Okay, so I've heard people say they don't like a system like this because they believe that it damages the seeds. Um, I've been doing this for probably at least four or five years and I haven't found that to be the case. And I do have some big seeds in here like corn seeds and beans and peas and they're really big seeds and sometimes they won't fit into that little sleeve. So There's also a place right here in this uh, divider that also has a big pocket. Yeah. So this is an envelope and all these envelopes are all different sizes, but this was an envelope that wouldn't fit to go into one of these uh, containers without damaging the seeds, but I could put them in here. But the thing is that it, when I close this up, this is pretty stuffed full, especially, you know, before I plant all my seeds. And you can see that there is a possibility that things are gonna get smushed a little bit. But I've never had a problem. I've never had a problem with my seeds getting smushed or damaged. I, I just, I never have. Personally, I never have. Um, if I ever had a problem, it was a germination rate because I've had these seeds in here for a long time. But that would have been the case no matter how you keep your seeds, whether it's in a shoebox or a fancy, expensive seed saving system or a Rubbermaid system. So my little temperature gauge is telling me it's 87 degrees in here, which it feels a lot hotter. It's probably because of the humidity, but it, sometimes it'll get up to 120 degrees out here. So, I mean, it's a cool day outside, but it, it'll get really hot and humid out here. It's saying 64% humidity. So, but I purposely try not to forget to bring these inside because you don't want them to be in the heat. You don't want them to be around moisture and you want them to be um, in the dark or not see the light of day because that's what these seeds need to germinate. They're gonna kind of think, oh, maybe I should wake up now. This was born out of trial and error for sure. I have kept seeds in like a shoebox before. The shoebox got damp, it got wet somehow. I don't remember how, probably left them outside. So I thought one time I'm gonna put them in, uh, we had an ammo can and I thought, nothing's gonna get in there. It's gonna stay airtight. I put my seeds in there, I sealed it down, and there was a little bit of moisture in there and everything was growing mold on it. When I opened it back up, it stunk, it was horrible. And your seeds can't have any kind of mold or fungus on it. That's just bad, bad news. You don't wanna do that. Like I keep these in my office. I'm sure that there's a lot of other really good ways, but I had people ask me, how do you do your little seed organizer thingy there? So this is my seed bank plus my garden journal. Okay, that'll do it for this one. Uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you know someone who's really into it, there's a share button down here. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Oh, there's a little roadrunner coming in here with me. How cool. I love it. They come, they eat snakes. They're the snake attackers.